Hi there, this is, behind me is the oldest European fort in North America. I believe it was built around 1565, but we will find out. It's called Castillo de San Marcos and it's in St. Augustine. And here it is, explore the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States. Okay, let's see what they will tell us here. Deadly crossfire. The Spanish built the star-shaped Castillo de San Marcos in the late 1600s. The star design responded to the advent of a deadly new weapon, the cannon. The fort's complex shape meant a battery of cannons on the gun deck could create interlocking fields of fire. Low and flat on the landscape, star-shaped forts used an obstacle course of defenses. Diamond-shaped protruding corners called bastions created crossfire to repel the enemy. Okay, and here is the picture. Illustration how they fought. And here is an interesting footnote. No attackers ever made it through the outer defenses to reach this final crossfire. And as they described the irregular shape as a tactical advantage, irregular shape of the fort. So this is one of the places where they were firing from, I guess. Obviously not with the cannons, just with the with the handguns, I guess. What else? Another interesting thing around here is I seem to be the only one wearing a mask and the personnel maybe. Other, otherwise people don't give a damn. Spanish soldiers watch in horror as English troops set fire to their homes. They are helpless. The drawbridges are up. The soldier settlers and their families are sheltered within the crowded forts, uh, crowded fortress. So here are some defensive cannons. Okay, can we climb here? I don't think so. Uh, the walls are pretty thick. And when I look what material they used, it's all broken seashells. Let's have a look at the inner courtyard or whatever it's called. It's a national park nowadays. And a lot of people, as you can see, come to visit. Over there in the corner is the one and only remaining water well. Don't know if it's visible, just that round shape in the corner. And I guess in the distance. It's uh, probably the old quarter of St. Augustine. There is some grand old church. Mexican War six-pounder cannon made in Sevilla, Spain, 1762. Nice. Sevilla, Spain also. And back there is the Hovitzer shooting up. Probably not very accurate, I would guess. 
Yeah, here it is, the big boy. Short, but wide. Yeah. And this used to be a drawbridge. So no one could get into the fortress without being authorized. And here is an impressive battery of cannons. Actually they use some of the cannons for for demonstrations and as I mentioned obviously shooting blanks but these are not the ones it's quite obvious it has been all kind of fused in the rust and the centuries of no maintenance and I think down there are the rooms that we will check out how it looked during its time of you and this is an open sea direction where the boats came the dolphin? no guarding the back door the Spanish built the Castillo de San Marcos along the winding shallow channel of the Matanzas River. And the ships entering the inlet faced the fort head on, unable to deploy their guns broadside. The strategic location kept marauding pirates and attacking British warships at bay. During the 1740 British siege, Ships from Cuba used the inlet at the southern end of Anastasia Island to resupply the town. Tidal toilet. This colonial restroom had a twice daily natural flushing system. Incoming tides filled the pit with seawater and outgoing tides flushed waste out into the bay. Okay, let's check out this boy. Not much to see here, and not in use, obviously. Not even for demonstration purposes. Does this look any better? No. Tidal toilet, no demonstration scheduled here. So where to next? From the toilets, we go somewhere else. Canon, we've seen that. What's up here? As impressive as it is, somehow I thought it would be bigger. I don't know why, not that I have any experience with the forts, old Spanish forts. The King's Coffer, Treasury Room. In the 18th century, Spanish military pay chest, important documents and valuables and so on. Multi-use moat. It smells and sounds like a farmyard. Okay. The 1702 British siege made staying in the town dangerous. Townspeople moved into the fort for protection, bringing their livestock with them. Well, let's see what this is. Some huge oven. So this furnace was used to heat up the cannonballs to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and then they would shoot them at the ships in hopes of catching fire. Well, innovative, never heard about this but live and learn. 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. 
blazing hot. Yeah, that was really hot. Through treaty, Spain ceded Florida to the United States in 1821. So maybe this is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, see you next time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.